Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the ReefNerd YouTube channel. Today I'm going to tell you how to make the alkalinity component of your two-part twice as strong. Okay, so that's a bit of a clickbaity headline, but let me get down to the crux of it. What we're going to be comparing today is sodium carbonate versus sodium bicarbonate. Now you might already know the difference, but for many reefers I've found speaking to them, they really don't know the difference. And ultimately, they're very similar chemical products and they make up the alkalinity component of most two-part additives on the market. Whether you're following one of Randy's recipes or a DIY recipe or doing it through one of the big brands like Red Sea, Aquaforest, etc., you're likely already dosing one of the two. And if you're using one of the big brands, it's more often than not that you're dosing sodium bicarbonate as your source of alkalinity to the tank. Now, right off the offset, I want to say there's absolutely nothing wrong with sodium bicarbonate. However, in my opinion, it can be better. And the way to make it better is so simple and so easy to do that I don't really see any reason why anyone should not do it. And that's why I want to tell you all about it. So the chemical formula for sodium bicarbonate is 2NaHCO3. And, this, and the chemical formula for sodium carbonate is Na2CO3. Now really the only difference in there of note is the lack of that extra hydrogen atom and the double concentration of sodium per CO2 molecule. What this means for a reef tank in practical terms is that for the same weight, sodium carbonate is twice as strong. Also, the effect on your reef tank when dosing sodium carbonate is a slight increase of pH, whereas the effect on a reef tank of dosing sodium bicarbonate is essentially a slight decrease in pH. Now, in my experience, I have never seen a reef tank where high pH is a problem. And almost all reefers that I speak to would give their left arm for a little bit of boosted extra pH. We're always doing things to try to increase the pH of our reef tanks just a little bit. Whether it's degassing chambers on CO2 reactors, whether it's running carbon dioxide scrubbers attached to your skimmer, whether it's bringing in fresh air directly into the intake of your skimmer from outside or opening a window in your house when weather permits. Uh, things like refugiums and algae scrubbers are great for increasing pH, but ultimately it's often a losing battle due to the nature of homes in suburbia and cities or apartment living like where I live, where just by fact of having people and pets and uh, living in a city, carbon dioxide in the air is quite high and your tank absorbs quite a lot of that and as a result you're always battling low pH. So this is just another way that you can help slightly fight against that low pH and have a slight boosting impact to the pH of your tank. So how do you do it? How do you take your sodium bicarbonate product? I have an example of that here. This is the Aquaforest KH buffer, although the equivalent products from almost every brand on the market that I've researched, unless specifically labeled as something like soda ash or sodium carbonate, are almost always going to be sodium bicarbonate. But if in doubt, check the fine print on the back, look for the chemical formula. If there's a hydrogen atom in there, as in it's NaHCO2, that means it's sodium bicarbonate. So all you need to do to convert your sodium bicarbonate into sodium carbonate is to place it on a sheet of aluminium foil or baking foil on a tray, put it in the oven at about as hot as you can go and leave it to bake in the oven for an hour. And that's it. An hour in the oven at a really hot temperature is all it takes to convert sodium bicarbonate into sodium carbonate. All you're doing is off-gassing water and carbon dioxide from the sodium bicarbonate and converting it into sodium carbonate. By weight, it will be almost exactly half of what you started with, but by strength, it will be double uh, in terms of the alkalinity boosting effect to your tank. What this then means for your dosing, if you've been mixing your own, is if you were previously using one of Randy's recipes, you would have been using Randy's recipe two, more than likely, with, carbon, uh, with sodium bicarbonate. 
you would switch to using Randy's recipe one, which is the sodium carbonate recipe. If you're using the recipe from Red Sea or Aquaforest or anybody else based on sodium bicarbonate, there's two options. You can either halve the amount of uh, alkalinity component that you mix up by weight, or double the amount of calcium and magnesium components that you mix up by weight. If you choose that option and you're doubling the calcium and the magnesium, you would then want to halve the amount that you dose to the tank because all of your solutions are now essentially twice as concentrated. I hope that makes sense, but if it doesn't, just rewind and re-listen to what I just said a few times. Make sure you have it clear in your mind and choose which option you prefer. Want to see practically how easy what I'm talking about actually is? Let's go and do it. All right, the first thing you need to do is measure out a specific amount of sodium bicarbonate. Um, in this case, I'm using Aquaforest KH buffer. Um, and I want to go with 400 grams just because uh, that's the recipe that I use for, for, for my particular use case. But you, you'll just want to go with whatever you're used to mixing up, um, depending on the size of your reservoirs or the recipe that you're following. Now remember, when this process is finished, you're gonna have half as much powder, but it's gonna be twice as strong. So by actual concentration for the effectiveness of increasing alkalinity in your tank, it will be identical. Just the amount you would need to dose will be half as much. All right, that's good enough for me. There we go, 400 grams of sodium bicarbonate. Now the next thing you'll wanna do is to have a baking tray with some baking paper or foil. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, the purpose of this is so that you're gonna be able to easily pick up and funnel the powder off afterwards. And you just wanna evenly spread the powder across all of the paper. Um, and you don't want it to be too thick, um, so. Just spread it out as best you can. Um, any big chunks where they've kind of stuck together, break those up, like see that there, I just wanna chop that up and break that up. But yeah, um, it's not really too important. You just wanna make sure that it's not in just a big pile. You want it to be fairly spread out um, to have as much surface area as possible. All right, that should do it. Um, and then all you wanna do is with your oven, put it on pretty much, um, fan forced is fine as long as it doesn't um, blow too hard, but most ovens shouldn't. Get the temperature right up. Um, so I do about 240 degrees. Um, it doesn't really matter. Anything over 200 degrees will be fine. Uh, and then you just leave it on for about an hour. I have a rapid heating function, so let's do that. All right, and chuck it in the oven. Now, if you want about halfway through, you can come and just stir the powder with a teaspoon just to make sure there's any pockets in there where there might be a bit of trapped steam um, because it is essentially off-gassing water as well as CO2. Um, but for the most part, an hour at 220 degrees or 240 degrees in this case is certainly gonna dry it out and convert 99.999% of this from sodium bicarbonate into sodium carbonate. All right, I'll see you in an hour. All right, as you can see, it's been almost an hour. Good enough for the girls I go out with, so I'm gonna call this done. Turn off the oven. And you can see the baking paper I used has gone a bit brown. Uh, just because I had it so hot, it was up at 240 degrees, but the powder will be perfectly fine. There's, um, you can't overcook the powder, it's not, not chemically possible within the realms of what you're going to do in an oven. Um, so this will be real hot. Let me get rid of that. There we go. And all you want to do now is let it cool down, and um, I can't stress this enough, this pow powder will be seriously hot, so don't touch it. Um, and it does take a little while to cool down. But if you get a teaspoon and just spoon through the powder, you'll notice that it has a consistency now that's much more like caster sugar. It's, it, it's much finer and lighter than it was. Um, 
if you can go and compare with your original powder to really note the difference, but you, you, you'll, you'll definitely see and feel a change in the powder. It's, it's smoother and finer um, than it was for sure. Um, resist the urge to funnel this straight back into something like a plastic container like this because it'll melt the plastic container. This powder is hot. Just let it sit for like 20 minutes, half an hour at least, just to make sure that it's cooled down before you um, pick it up by the paper and funnel it back into whatever container you're going to store it in. Uh, whether you're going to mix it up straight away or whether you're going to just store it as um, sodium carbonate. Um, either way, wait for it to cool down. So the main benefits of doing this is because it's uh, so much more water soluble, you can mix a far more concentrated solution, meaning if you've got small dosing reservoirs, they're going to last way longer and you'll be dosing half as much or if you want to have more concentrated calcium and magnesium solutions, you can do that as well. Whereas with um, sodium bicarbonate, the amount you can physically dissolve into water is fairly limited. And therefore in turn, it limits the amount of calcium and magnesium you can, um, you can mix up because you need to dose all of these things in equilibrium. And then of course, the one I've been mentioning the most in this video is it has a pH increasing effect which in my opinion for 99.9% .9 of reefers out there is a positive thing. I've never come across anyone who has issues where their pH is too high. Uh, increased pH is good for all aspects of marine reef tanks, oral growth, coral health, coral coloration, almost everything associated with a reef tank benefits from high pH. The other reason that I recommend this for everyone is it's so easy to do, it's free. You've probably already got sodium bicarbonate and just by pouring it onto a sheet of baking paper and chucking it in the oven for an hour, you're just making it better. Anyway, my name is Marcus. I hope you found this video helpful. You've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.